reason I'm choosing to watch this video is because I was watching a podcast the other day and it was like, how come every time we talk about great boxers, the white people try to sprinkle in Rocky Marciano? Now, I know he had like the best record of all time. And I'm look, I'm I'm not a hater. OK, I give people credit. We watched the Larry Bird video. That boy's cooking. OK, so now we got to see what Rocky Marciano was whipping up in the ring. You know what I'm saying? So let's get it. I once showed my friend a highlight reel of Rocky Marciano. Oof. To which he replied, but that's not real, right? That was from an old movie. And looking at the footage, it's easy to understand his reaction. Rocky Marciano almost routinely knocked people God, out of the ooh. room. Known as the Brockton Bomber, Marciano fought some of the Brockton. greatest heavyweights Brockton's of all Canada, time. Right? And stands as the only heavyweight champion without a single loss on his record. Mm. Allegedly, he had to have a custom 300-pound heavy bag made for his training, which would help explain why 43 of his 49 fights were won by knockouts. devastating knockouts. That's crazy. His achievements are all the more impressive when you consider that Rocky is a pretty unusual heavyweight, even for back then. At 5'10", with arms slightly shorter than Manny Pacquiao's, Rocky was one of the smallest heavyweight champions ever, Holland, despite Michigan's his from. size. He was also one of the heaviest hitters the division has ever seen. Put simply, Rocky's punches sometimes look like something straight out of a comic book. Marciano also had the insane cardio necessary to maintain this intensity all, all the way until the 15th round. If opponents- 15 rounds? Oh, nah. This is, he gotta be the GOAT. He gotta be. Heavyweight, um, heavyweight undefeated. 15 rounds that boy was cooking yeah we'll watch after that this could last that long rocky threw so many punches so consistently that it didn't really matter if every single one hit even if his opponent had an iron guard he would simply batter and bruise their arms until they lost all feeling and became rendered useless yo he Recently, had to be on Nello something Alvarez right? has ain't used no way the same strategy to great effect while his limitless stamina he and got vibranium in them gloves. Uh, that, uh, that's what I'm going with, bro. He has to. Bulldozer-like punches made Rocky the quintessential relentless fighter. He was far from being a mindless slugger who just overwhelmed his opponents with ferocity and brute force. Marciano's mm. style was unorthodox, yet highly intelligent and very methodical. A lot of people ask how Rocky was so successful taking so much damage. A much better question to ask would be how someone so recklessly aggressive could take so little damage. A mm, few videos true. ago, we examined how Thomas the Hitman Hearns was the perfect template for taller, lengthier fighters. Likewise, Rocky Marciano Boy, is the whiplash. perfect template for a shorter and stockier fighter. So today, We'll explore the way Look how he's Rocky swinging the distance, landed his incredible knockouts, and bullied his often larger competitors without getting bullied himself. From the moment the fight started, Rocky balanced aggression with nuanced defense. Almost every punch he threw had knockout potential. Bo, didn't it in like fight night round something? One of them fight night games on like the original Xbox. Rocky Marciano, he had like the one hitter quitter. Like he was the only character that you could hit somebody one time and knock them out. I seen it. It happened to me. I'm pretty sure. But almost every punch he threw was brilliantly set up in order to remain as safe as possible. This is especially impressive because Rocky was the embodiment of throwing your entire body weight into every punch. He would use exaggerated head movement to create extra distance, loading up his shots and putting a lot more momentum into his punches. Mm. He's swinging like he's trying to hit a home run with a head. While hey, most bro. fighters prefer to advance with their front foot first, Rocky preferred to do the opposite, moving his back foot to his front foot. This is very similar to the footwork used by Smoke and Joe Frazier. Like Frazier, it was not a very subtle or nuanced step, but it did allow Rocky to cover a lot of distance and put a lot more power behind his punches. Mm. Taken together, did Rocky's see the exaggerated head movement and unusual shuffle step set up the ideal mechanics to unleash the two most powerful punches in boxing 
in the most powerful way possible. These punches were the right overhand and lead hook. To set up his overhand, Rocky would lean back while shuffling into an exchange. Another oddity, this movement pattern allowed him to advance while remaining defensively responsible. Mm. If his opponent tried to catch him with a jab or cross, Rocky didn't need to change his position drastically to respond. He could simply ride the punch back to reduce the impact, or shuffle away to a safe position from his crouch, as Mayweather likes to do. True. As well as keeping him safe, this backwards leaning advance loaded up an unbelievable amount of power in Rocky's punches. Bro, Particularly, he got the soles of people's Suzy feet Q facing cross, the ceiling. And his decimating overhand. Since leaning back put most of his weight over his rear foot, Rocky just needed to shift his weight a smart forward guy right there. practically pitch his punch into his opponents. And this led to some of the most beautiful pole counters ever seen in the heavyweight division. Taking it one step further, Rocky did not follow the conventional wisdom of twisting his back foot to put his hip behind his cross. Rocky would instead step into his cross, unpinning his back foot to allow more follow through. Of course, a boxer lifting their back foot can cause them to lose balance. Facts. And many fighters would try to capitalize on that open window and of miss. vulnerability. But Rocky had a unique way of turning this seeming disadvantage into a safe exit. After setting up his cross, Rocky would often evade by lateral shuffling out to a southpaw stance. Before pivoting back to an orthodox stance, I thought he was about to swing great again. boxing stylists like Roy Jones Jr. would go on to have great success with sequences exactly like this many years later. If the opponent <laughs> retreated, Rocky could Buddy turn tried to step out the into ring. a full-on shift. <laughs> yeah. Moving forward into southpaw to chase down his opponents. This would turn his already powerful left hook into a shifting rear hook. Speaking of, Rocky's hook was just as devastating as his rear hand. Rocky would usually begin to set this up in the same way as his overhand, with deep, exaggerated He's like walking down a person. And momentum. Instead of leaning back into an overhand, he would weave to the inside, masking the beginning of his hook and building up momentum. Besides setting it up with an extremely deep inside crouch, the thing that made Marciano's hook unusual was that he often threw it as a gazelle punch. What the heck is a gazelle punch? Like Frazier, Rocky would spring up out of his crouch to shuffle forward as he straightened up and threw. This not only covered more distance, but it also added a lot of weight to an already powerful hook. Floyd Patterson would popularize this movement many years later. Okay. You can check out my video on him if you'd like to learn more. Since both his fight ending hook and overhand came off of exaggerated head movement, Rocky's opponents would often be conditioned to see that movement alone as a warning, and he could use this to get them to back themselves into corners. Mm. Even the great Jersey Joe Walcott respected Rocky's power so much that, that he boy's backed running. away from the mere sight of his swaying head movement, and this resulted in one of the most beautiful punches ever thrown. Rocky had one more line of defense to set up these dangerous attacks. These were the blocks that he used while crouching. And like everything else in his style, they were extremely unusual. Rocky would often alter his rear hand parry, letting it travel so far over his center line that okay. it would turn into a rear cross block. Mm. Years later, Ken Norton would use a similar block to nullify Ali's jab, but usually for a more upright position. Another highly unusual but equally effective tactic- Look how they are swinging at each other! They, yo, listen, they are spamming heavy attack. No light attack, no kicks, no nothing. Straight heavy attack over and over. As Rocky's lead inverse elbow- Somebody swing like that and miss- 
You hear the air of them? I'm done. I'm good. This ain't the fight I want to have. Block. While it's common to elevate the elbow during a shoulder roll to add more protection, Rocky took this one step further, often ditching the roll altogether. This block did a great job protecting the lead side of his head while he crouched. Mm. But if Rocky's long range power shots didn't connect, that didn't mean opponents were out of the woods. Like this is who Deontay Wilder could be if he locked in, all right? Because he obviously got the power, he got the swings, he just ain't got the technique, all right? Rocky Marciano is like, yo, listen, we locking in, mink, mink, weave, weave, bong, knocked out. Marciano's infighting was just as devastating as his long-range power blows. Rocky again used his shorter and stockier frame to its fullest advantage, getting in close and unleashing an endless barrage of shorter, tighter punches. So while a tall fighter like Hearns shines the best when they can keep their opponent at the end of their jab, Woo! Rocky knew that he needed that to boy looked like Afro Thunder when he did that right there. There, his shorter arms could beat opponents to the punch and capitalize on angles that would take the fight to him? in his favor. Here too, Rocky seamlessly blended defense and offense. Because Rocky stepped or shuffled into his punches, he could put that momentum to good use by driving his head into his opponent's hips or shoulders immediately after throwing. Mm. This both kept him safe and unbalanced his competitors. Notice in this clip how Rocky uses the momentum from his stepping overhand We to crash his head into Ezra Charles' hip. Smothering Charles and nullifying his counter before it can happen. Yo, that's low key, very smart. Rocky could. But all it takes is for one person to back up a little too much. Uppercut, you're cooked. You look an uppercut straight in the face while your head's down. You going into the upper room like it's Mortal Kombat. All right, I done seen that happen. I done seen some people get caught with a knee like that. They go to dive down, that knee come up, mink. You get hit with an uppercut like oof, oof. Also use these head positions to manipulate his opponent's movement. Once his head was safely pinned on his opponent's shoulder or hip, Rocky would push forward to steer them off balance or force them to back up. If opponents tried to counter wrestle, Rocky would rake his head up across their chest, pushing their chin up to leave them open for devastating headshots. Mm. Along with controlling the their posture, Rocky would also manipulate their guard, and he would do this by directly prying it open. From his inside position, Rocky would insert his arms between his opponent's guard and crack it open, creating targets so that he could put his T-Rex arms to good use. Bruh. People walk away, they ribs crush, main sternum broken. tactic on the inside was to suddenly disengage from his head slot on the opponent's shoulder in order to land a punch on the same side. Mm. Because his head effectively blocked his opponent's vision on that side, Rocky would use this to his advantage by suddenly unpinning his head and replacing it with his fist. But Rocky was at his very best when he combined his extreme head movement with his stellar wrestling. He would weave from one head position to another, unloading with the momentum of his head movement behind his punches. I don't think I ever seen somebody swing this hard before they could counter. At times, Rocky would weave over or under his opponent's head just like Roberto Duran would do years later. It should be noted that this technique requires a lot of skill and practice, mm. since it's easy to accidentally headbutt your opponent and get called for a foul, or get headbutted yourself Look at the and possibly oh. cut. It should be clear by now that Rocky's style relied heavily on crossing the center line at both long range and close range. What Marciano really never gets enough credit for is how he could do the same thing with his footwork and on a pretty intricate level. Look like he's swinging with all of his might 
to load up and swing again. My man has no endurance bar. You ever play a game, you're running, then your character got to slow down, catch their stamina back up. My man is heaving punches. And and they're not losing power. In not fact, me, big fella. I would not make me. The bold statement that Marciano had brilliant footwork that worked in tandem perfectly with his wild punches. Rather than simply barreling forward, Rocky turned the momentum from his shuffles into lateral movement. And these nuanced adjustments helped him to circumvent <laughs> his opponent's guard ensuring that each punch could come from a completely different angle, even while in the middle of throwing long combinations. Look how he's loading up. He's like jumping into the punch. Bro, this man has no regard for a human life. Marciano's skill has been historically underappreciated. Mainly, I think, because his style was so unusual but it's not obvious right away what he was doing or why he was doing it. Even those that praise him tend to focus on his impressive knockout power and cardio, not looking far beyond that. But Rocky proved beyond a shadow of a doubt mm. that his style had merit. He was a powerhouse, a stylist, an infighter, and a thinker. Marciano is well worth studying, even today. Facts. For more information on football, uh. defense, Power. You can check Yo, out that boy Rocky Marciano is one of them. Okay, he's one of those. All right. I always heard the name. Uh, I think Little Wayne said it in the song, like Rocky Marciano. Child, uh, ain't it? How do, what I know? Been getting that cash like Sonny Bono. Ch I started high with two O's, just like Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know the song, right? It was on like Father Like Son, but um. What was the Rocky Marciano line, though? I don't remember. But what I do know is that was the first time I heard of who he was. Then I think Fight Night, the one-hitter quitter, I seen that happen. And then I always heard it brought up till like, last week. I heard on a podcast, it was like, why they always try to sprinkle Rocky Marciano into the wrestling debate? I mean, the, the boxing debates. I was like, let me go see a video about how good Rocky Marciano really was and... He was one of them.